Studio One version seven will be released from PreSonus on October 9th of this year. But should current users of Studio One be upgrading to version seven? In today's video, we'll look at everything we know so far from PreSonus about version seven. Then I'm gonna spill the beans for you on whether this is a good idea or not, and also what I'm hoping to find in version seven of Studio One. So hold on to your wallets for now and let's get started. I first heard the announcement from the official PreSonus YouTube channel when they put out a video, The Future of Studio One Pro. The video features the YouTube giants in the Studio One community, Joe Gilder and Gregor, who you might've seen already. If you haven't seen the video already, I'll link it in the description of this video, but just be aware, it's definitely giving off those conference room meeting vibes. I can't recall anything quite like this from PreSonus in the past, so I was instantly intrigued of what's going on. Based on that video, here's everything we know about Studio One version seven at this time. Throughout the entire video, the entire focus is on the pricing structure for Studio One. Basically, artist and prime versions are gone. Studio One Professional is called Studio One Pro, and now that's the standard if you're gonna purchase a perpetual license. And if you're looking for the subscription plan, that's now called Studio One Pro Plus. If you currently own Studio One Artist or any version of Studio One Professional, you can upgrade to Studio One Pro version seven for the price of $149.99. And those of you that are brand new to the software, you don't have any previous versions of Studio One, you're gonna be paying the full price of $199.99. Studio One Pro version seven is gonna come with all of their extensions and virtual instruments. The video from PreSonus also mentions that what they plan to do is have smaller releases throughout the year, and then every 12 months have a big major release. They go on to mention that you get 12 months of updates and upgrades after the time of your purchase. So if for some reason, Studio One version eight comes out in November of this year, you'll definitely be covered if you purchase version seven in October. Those of you that have already purchased PreSonus version six professional, as of August of this year, you should be able to upgrade for free. So if you just bought it within the past month or so, you should be able to upgrade to version seven when that comes out. Surprisingly, that's all for the big announcement. Now for the big question, should you upgrade? Back in March of 2016, I purchased for myself Studio One Professional version three. For years and years, I'd already been using the artist version of Studio One, had been very happy with it, but I was looking for that more professional level up. I remember my experience with version three professional was that everything just seemed to be more. I was given more tracks, more features, more plugins. It was all very exciting. I remember it being quite an expense, but it was definitely a worthwhile investment for me at that time. Most of the music that I record revolves around real instruments. So that's stuff like drums, guitars, bass, and vocals. Over the years, I've just noticed that PreSonus is branching out to more of like the DJ and rapper kind of world because they're putting an emphasis on virtual instruments, loop libraries, and samples. That's not me complaining about PreSonus and what they're doing, but feature after feature, year after year, it does seem to be features that I'm not really that much interested in. So I definitely feel like a dinosaur that I use Studio One basically like a tape machine. I'm not super interested in the virtual instruments, loops, and libraries that they've been releasing year after year, but I definitely understand that that's how they need to make their money. So please understand that my main use for PreSonus Studio One is to capture performances that are happening in the rooms that I'm currently in. I'm not looking for the computer to make the songs for me. I'm just inputting my music into the computer, much like you would on tape machine. So what that means is that the projects that I'm working on, I could be working on them in version three, just as well as I'm working on them in version six. And I dare say that even in version seven, there's not going to be that many features that are going to take me out of my element. So over the years, when it came to upgrading to version four, version five and version six, I've not been super excited to do so. But one thing you'll always notice is that whenever there's a big new version of the software, there's usually a big feature announcement. So it concerns me that with version seven, as of this recording, we don't know about any of the features that they're gonna be offering. Version four of Studio One introduced chord tracks and beat making. Version five, if you'll remember, we were introduced to 64-bit recording and aux tracks. Version six seemed like it was a big update because we were introduced to immersive audio. So if you're interested in getting into Atmos or doing the spatial audio stuff with Apple, this was a big upgrade. And personally, I upgraded year after year because I didn't want to get left in the dust. I can honestly say I've never used PreSonus Studio One for any of those features that were mentioned earlier. And for the most part, as I'm using PreSonus Studio One, I like using Presence, I like using Impact Drums, but I have so many third-party plugins that do the same thing, if not better, that I've just not been super interested to dig through all of the presets. 
I think it's definitely concerning that not one feature for version seven was mentioned in the big announcement video. And because there were no features announced and a week has gone by since that video is up, all we have left to talk about is the pricing of Studio One, which is never gonna go well with customers. So you might be wondering, am I upgrading to version seven? As a YouTuber that primarily makes my videos using PreSonus Studio One, I think it's a given on what I'm gonna be doing. I am gonna be upgrading to version seven as soon as it releases, but I'm not being sent a code. I'm gonna be spending my own money, and which in my case is gonna be $149.99. But should you? I can honestly say that at this moment, I can't think of a single reason that you should be upgrading to version seven of Studio One, which is crazy to say, but really why should you? There's no announcement of any sort of feature and you don't know what you're getting into. So even if you're running an old version of Studio One, just ask yourself, are your projects, are your musical recordings or your podcasting, is everything going well? Because if it's going well, you definitely don't need to be upgrading if you don't know what you're getting into just yet. Here's a few things that I would like to see PreSonus version seven offer. Now, my first hope is actually a long shot. Fender a few years ago bought out PreSonus and I've been waiting on some sort of collaboration between the two companies. Fender has the Tone Master, which is like their pedal version of the Line 6 Helix. And I would love to see Empire get an update or an upgrade that somehow mimics the Fender Tone Master. I understand they would have to implement some sort of pricing scheme to this, but if they could upgrade Empire to where it sounds more similar to even the Helix, I'd be very excited about that feature. I'd also like to see PreSonus kind of mimic what UAD have been doing. So Universal Audio has some virtual instruments that are very specific in niche. So they have a piano VST, they have a Rhodes electric piano VST, and then they also have things like the Moog synthesizer. And when you look at the UAD virtual instruments, they're not trying to be everything all at once. And I think this is where the virtual instruments on PreSonus, they kind of come across like the native instruments library. You just get overwhelmed. And if you're looking for simplicity, most of the time I have a piano, a Steinway piano VST that I reach for all the time. If you find that one virtual instrument that does the thing you need, you really don't need one thing that does everything. So I'd love to see PreSonus get a little more focused on specific virtual instruments coming out at a time. These can either be based on retro instruments that we're easily able to mimic in the virtual world, but I'm tired of seeing so many synthesizers that have 800 presets like presence on PreSonus Studio One. My last request is quite a stretch, but as a YouTuber, I would love to see Studio One lean in a little bit to the video editing side of things. Now I know there's a video player, but Studio One has often crashed on me too many times when I'm trying to load a video and trying to mix the audio at the same time. I'm still using Final Cut Pro to edit my YouTube videos, but when I'm using Final Cut Pro, I'm not doing a whole lot of advanced editing. So even just being able to drop videos in PreSonus Studio One, do a little bit of cut and slicing, do a few fades, it wouldn't take much for it to be kind of the all in one shop place to go for making YouTube videos and podcasts and more. I know these are big requests, but there's not really anything else that I'd be excited about updating from PreSonus Studio One. So if you're on version six, I would just definitely wait and see what happens. I'll be upgrading to version seven. There'll be videos on my channel where you can check out the features as they become available. I'll thank you for watching this video. My name is Chris Green. My whole channel is about practical tips for playing and recording music. YouTube thinks that you might be interested in this video just over my shoulder right here. Uh, but before you go, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons, check out the video and let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, bye.